A whistleblower group is taking legal action to compel the Department of Justice to reveal why it surveilled congressional staff. So it's truly, really, it's not a partisan issue. It's not a, you know, it's the permanent government. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, this process is essentially a rubber stamp process. I think that's what we're going to see when we get these records unsealed. Just the news reported that the last fall that the Department of Justice seized phone and email records of congressional staffers back in 2017, raising concerns about government branches separation of powers. Jason Foster, now head of the Empower Oversight, is among those whose records were seized. The DOJ sought to keep the surveillance secret for six years, prompting Empower Oversight's push for transparency, concerns about constitutional violations led to investigations by the Department of Justice Inspector General and the House Judiciary Committee. The DOJ subpoena and surveillance actions have sparked questions about legality and constitutional boundaries. Joining us now is the Director of Investigations and Research for Judicial Watch, Chris Farrell. Chris, welcome back to Victory News. Great to be with you. Thank you very much. All right, I know you've got a reaction to this. I want to get your reaction to the Department of Justice alleged spying on Congress and Empower Oversight's court action, what this all means for the separation of powers between our three branches of government. Yeah, it's very dangerous what's going on. And we have the Justice Department, uh, per usual, sadly, acting in a really rogue manner and just uh, plunging into what should be a power-separated, power-protected relationship between the executive branch and the ju judiciary. You know, Jason Foster worked for Grassley on the Judiciary Committee. I know him and I know Senator Grassley. And uh, I'm quite certain that the FBI and Department of Justice were very concerned about what that committee was doing and what they were looking at. So what better way to undermine any sort of oversight then to go ahead and seize the emails and communications of the people that are looking at you. Uh, this is a kind of abuse of power. This is, this is corrosive. It destroys the Constitution. It's very dangerous. And I'm glad that they're suing because you can't even rely on the inspector general. Very often, inspectors general uh, is really where the truth goes to die. It's part of the D.C. cover-up operation. Wow. Uh, it's something that we need to keep our eye on. I'm glad somebody's doing it. Let's discuss Alva Bragg's ongoing show trial against Donald Trump. CNN panelist, network uh, political director David Challen summed up things so far this way. I've seen precious little evidence presented yet that Trump wasn't floating right. above. I mean, I've seen very little evidence of Trump's direct involvement in getting this accomplished. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. I'll Chris, if things continue on this track of the courtroom, how strong is the potential for a jury to find reasonable doubt over Donald Trump's involvement in what appears to be Alvin Bragg's lawfare scheme and Michael Cohen's conduct? Well, the case is worthless. It's really a kangaroo court operation. This is Alvin Bragg is contrived and cobbled together bits and pieces of garbage and tries to, you know, use alchemy to turn it into something that it isn't. The problem is... The president is sitting in front of a New York jury, and that's the wild card. So Alvin Bragg could be throwing up a lot of garbage, but sadly, in it, with a New York jury, it might stick. All right. Now, Judicial Watch is reporting the Biden administration using a federal agency to go after a family that's donated significantly to Republicans. Tell us the story, Chris. Yeah, so the bottom line is the Biden EEOC, the Biden administration, believes that persons of color are criminals. That's the conclusion you draw. And the reason you draw that conclusion is Sheets, which is a family-owned business in, in Pennsylvania, they have many gas stations in, all over the country. But nonetheless, the Sheets family are Republican donors. Biden had a horrible appearance at a Sheets recently in Pennsylvania. And so suddenly, out of the blue, the EEOC decides that they're going to look into Sheets hiring practices. And Sheets, like many, many other businesses, does a criminal background check. They don't want to have felons working for them, which is a pretty reasonable thing. And uh, so because they do a criminal background check, the EEOC now concludes, oh, you're trying to target persons of color. I guess that's their position. If you're a person of color you're, and you run a, a criminal background check, 
that means the same thing to the Biden administration. Wow. And therefore, they've turned it on its head and gone after the Sheets family.